Welcome to your weekly UAS News Update. This is the week of October 3rd, 2022. We've got four stories for you this week. The first one has to do with Remote ID. The first Remote ID module was approved and uh, something that you may not like nearly as much is there's a new app to go along with it to keep track of drones that are flying around with Remote ID. We'll talk about Paladin that came up with a module that you can put on DJI drones and that's gonna turn your DJI drone into an LTE drone. It's pretty cool. We'll talk about a drone show uh, at a balloon fiesta festival that was also really cool and then lastly a drone in Australia crashed into power line and this is a wing drone which is not a small drone so let's get to it All right, the first story is a story about Remote ID, right? What would be news update without a good Remote ID news update? Well, this is the first module that was approved by the FA uh, to be Remote ID compliant. Uh, this is called a drone tag. Uh, now, this is a company based in Europe. The bad news is this is a $300 module. Uh, this is the one thing that I was afraid of when uh, we started talking about modules, is that these modules were gonna be extremely expensive. Now, keep in mind, this is not re uh, required for another year so the, 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 the fact that this is the first one is probably why it's expensive. Uh, there's going to be more competition in the future. Uh, my hope, if anybody is making these modules and is listening, my hope is that these modules will cost between $20 and $30 maximum uh, so that people actually want to buy them to put them on their drone and actually uh, comply with Remote ID. Uh, at $300, this is going to be a, a massive failure uh, as far as people wanting to comply. So I'm not super excited and, and too happy about seeing this price tag. Now, uh, with that comes an app called Drone Scanner. Uh, this app is available on iOS and on Android. Uh, it, is it is designed to keep track of drones that have remote ID. Um, the, the one thing that I didn't care for when I downloaded it and started playing with it is that it will have the ability to store information about location, uh, the history of a flight basically going in there. Now, uh, it's hard to tell at this stage because we haven't been able to get any kind of drone uh, picked on the, uh, on, the, on the app in itself. Uh, we flew the Mavic 3 that we have. We flew the Mini 3 uh, Pro as well, which are both approved to be Remote ID compliant. Uh, my guess is that at this stage, uh, DJI hasn't turned that on just yet, uh, even though the drone is compliant, it's not really sending a signal. Also, another possibility, when you go into the app in itself and you look at the different settings, um, it only has the ability to pick up uh, Bluetooth signals at the moment. I don't know if it's because of the phone that I'm using, which is not an old phone. This is a, an iPhone 13 Plus, but uh, it didn't have the ability to pick uh, Wi-Fi signals. And I'm guessing that that's what DJI is going to be using uh, instead of Bluetooth. So right now the app is not doing much. I don't think anybody can pick up any kind of signal, uh, but I'm sure as uh, things progress, you'll be able to do that. Uh, again, keep in mind, this is uh, still very new. This is not required on your drone for another year. So there's going to be a lot of changes. I know the price tag is going to, is going to be a hard pill to swallow for many, including myself. But we'll have uh, more information as we see more modules, and hopefully that price comes down uh, drastically. All right, the next story this week is from our friends at Paladin. Uh, they created a DJI dongle, actually, it's a, well, let's put it this way. They created a dongle that cr that turns in a DJI drone into an LTE drone. Uh, this means that the drone can be controlled from a distance, from a long distance. Uh, the idea here is to make this uh, a BV loss or a DFR um, improvement to help with these type of operation, a DFR drone as first responder. Uh, the, the module simply plugs in into the SDK port in the back of the Matrice 300 and the Matrice 30, and, uh, and then it turns the drone into an LTE controllable drone. Uh, this works with their platform at the moment that they're using with a bunch of different uh, public safety departments across the country where they're sending drones to be uh, doing DFR, drone as first responder. Uh, this is exciting. The, the device is called EXT. Uh, it's going to be available starting October 6. Uh, we actually got a chance to use it and test it. Uh, I'll put a link into the video right up here, but we flew a drone in Texas uh, from our couch right here in the office in Arizona. And it was just uh, an amazing experience. Um, yeah, go, go check out the video. This is really something that you want to see. All right. 
Next story is a drone show at a Balloon Fiesta Festival. Uh, this happened in Albuquerque, if you're familiar with that huge uh, festival that happens there. Uh, they celebrated 50 years this year, and they had over 300 drones that were flying. Uh, this was done by Verge Aero. Uh, we actually gave them uh, some uh, airspace in the Pixel Drone Show about a year ago, uh, talking about what they do with drones. Uh, the drone show will continue at the uh, Fiesta Festival until Sunday the 9th, which will be a couple days after uh, we pu put this up. Uh, we'll put a link down in the description if you want to see more information. And the last story, this happened in Australia where a wing drone uh, attempted to land in a power line. Let's rephrase this. It uh, attempted to land and then landed in a power line. Uh, that caused a major outage to over 2,000 people in the area. Uh, this is kind of the first time that this uh, kind of event has happened. Uh, no damage was done to the power line grid per se, uh, to the whole grid. Uh, although the electrical company said that uh, if they had damage, they would have a uh, seek for repayment. Um, this is something that I think we need to start getting used to. Uh, power lines are very difficult to detect, especially with these kinds of large drones that have uh, detect and avoid that are being flown beyond visual line of sight. Uh, Australia is a bit ahead of the US as far as uh, BV loss implementation. So if anything happens, I think we'll see these trends happening in Australia before we see them uh, coming in the US. But uh, I thought this was interesting. All right, that's all I have. A packed uh, news update this week. And then as always, like, subscribe. Next week, we're gonna be at the show in Vegas for DJI Airworks. We're gonna see all of our friends from the industry and then uh, be able to see what DJI is gonna tell us. So uh, chances are we'll have a news update that's gonna be pretty heavy on DJI. Oh, this is heavy. Uh, I know some of you are critical sometimes when we talk about DJI a lot, but they, uh, well, they're doing a lot of things. So we talk about what happens in the industry. All right, that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull?